السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة all praises due to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His aid, and we ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evil consequences of our own actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray, and whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped, none has the right to our ultimate love and devotion, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and die not except as Muslims. O mankind, be dutiful to your Lord who created you from a single person and from him he created his wife. And from them both he created many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and observe the rights of your kin. Surely Allah is ever and all watcher over you. O you, who you, o you who believe, keep your duty to Allah, fear Him, and speak the truth. He will direct you to righteous deeds and will forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has indeed attained a great achievement. The best words are those of Allah. And the best guidance is that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And the worst things in the religion are the newly invented matters. For all the newly invented matters in religion are considered to be innovation and bid'ah, and every bid'ah is misguidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses us in the Qur'an, 
and he speaks to us in the Quran about something specific but he's pointing out a general rule as to how we can navigate the ocean of this life safely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the people who will end up in the hellfire so he describes the state in this world some of these people are very intelligent but some of them are very dumb some of them are extremely skillful and educated and some of them lack all these basic skills they come from different walks of life from different backgrounds different languages different social status and so on and so forth yet they share one common denominator that leads them to the hellfire Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them Nasullaha fa'ansahum anfusahum They forgot about Allah or they abandoned Allah or they kept themselves busy and preoccupied away from their source of being from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So Allah led them to forget about themselves Allah led them to abandon themselves Allah led them to a state where they could not recognize anymore what is good for them and what is in their best interest that's the general rule in the quran and if you were to study islam a little bit more in depth you will see this happens and occurs everywhere in islam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows that he does not do injustice at all and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's the unique thing about the creation of the human beings. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suggested to the angels and informed the angels, He said, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. He said, I shall place on earth a khalifa. I shall place on earth a deputy. I shall place on earth some generation, some creation to govern it. And the word khalifa itself suggests very strongly that I will give them something special because I'm entrusting them with the earth and I'm, I'm entrusting them with this life so that means I will give them choice I will give them freedom because the angels don't have choice the angels as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them in the Quran لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون the angels they do not disobey Allah whatever he commands them with and they only do what they are commanded so the angels have no choice of their own. They don't know what choice really feels like. They're designed, they're created, they're fashioned in a way to, to just obey what Allah inspires them with. Whatever Allah commands them to do, that's how they behave, that's how they live their life. They have no other choice. They can't even consider or contemplate or entertain the idea of choosing something different. It doesn't even occur to them by their very nature. The same applies to everything that we, we know in the universe. The sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, the atoms, the molecules, the animals, the trees, the wind, animate objects, inanimate objects, everything that Allah created that we know of doesn't have choice. It just follows a set course. And Allah gave humans this specific unique ability that we have a choice, that we can choose. And that's part of the word Khalifa. That's part of the word Khalifa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made our choices consequential in the sense when you make a choice, whether consciously or unconsciously, you're going to deal with the consequences of that choice. You might say, I, don't, I, I wasn't conscious I wasn't aware that I made that choice still the choices will have their consequences you treat people with injustice is gonna come back to you humanity all knows this different cultures voice it and express it in different ways in Arabic they say al min jins al -amal. so they say the 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 results are of the same kind of what you put in in English, they say what goes around comes around, right? All cultures, all languages in the world have something to that effect. And that's part of the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's, that's, this is an, an important part of the consequences of our choices and our nature as human beings, that we have 
to a certain extent a free will to choose but the consequences are arbitrary in the sense we don't we can't play around with the consequences the consequences are set and we are informed of the consequences and sometimes we are commanded and ordered to investigate and learn about the consequences if we don't know them so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it clear about these people who will end up in the hellfire that they made a choice and it was a very powerful and ubiquitous and general choice about their life that they forgot about Allah they decided to live their life heedless of Allah unaware of Allah turn a blind eye to Allah forget about Allah live their life without being conscious and aware and mindful and obedient to Allah so they made that choice and they think according to their limited insight that that's all what there is it's this life so probably some of them those who were intelligent those who were informed and educated and resourceful they built some kind of what seems to be a successful productive life so they accumulated wealth they rose high in the ladder of success they had families they had resources and influence and power and civilization and they think we have forgotten about our creator but still here we have it all here we have it all so they think they can fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they think they can fool him and that's impossible that's impossible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ And they plot, and they plot, and they try to fool Allah and others. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of plotters when he plots. It's impossible. It's impossible that you can outsmart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an impossibility. You have to figure it out. Allah knows everything. He has control over everything. And if you try to outsmart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you try to plot against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and play smart, the very success that you achieve, seemingly what you call success, will be your demise and will be your destruction itself. And here I recall a story. It's a contemporary story. And it happened with this guy who was working with a big contractor. He was a builder. So he worked for this big a huge contract uh, or huge con construction company and he reached a point where he wanted to retire and he started pre preparing himself for that and he informed his company that I'm retiring when the date of his retirement came close his manager his boss he said to him I know it's the time for you to retire and you've been planning for that for so long but I need one favor from you before you retire I just want you to work on this project it's a massive house it's a big mansion it is something special it's a special design that we have our architects have put together I want you to build that house and then after you're done with this job that's the final thing you will do that would seal all the great you know history and record you have Oh, you have with us he didn't receive it well and he decided to rush through it so he built it but he cut corners in order to speed up the process and he didn't really build it well according to the standards so he finished it in such a short time and when the house was ready he goes to his manager and he says the job is done so that's that's a farewell meeting. I'm not going to see you anymore. This is perfect. So for us as a company, as a sign of appreciation for the work that you've put with this company and everything that you've done, the great work, the extraordinary contributions that you have offered this company and you've helped us build this reputation. This house that you built is our gift to you. And thus he received what he put in that project so he received that house that story is not unique because every one of us is just like that 
when he thought his success to finish it in a record time and to just rush through it and cut corners and then he would get closer to his retirement he thought he was doing something great he was being successful he was being efficient he didn't realize that he was building his own house he was building his own house and this is how this life goes whatever you do in this life you think you've wronged someone you've oppressed someone you've sought means round you have set up people in order for yourself to be successful to achieve more to get more to get what you want and you think that's it I'm being smart I got away with everything but you don't realize that the very thing that you think is your success is your failure and your destruction. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking about these people that who will end up in the hellfire that they thought they turned their attention to other than Allah. They focused completely on this life. And we know that it's not haram, it's not impermissible to focus on this life and be successful in this life and reach a level of full expression of who you are of your strengths, of your talents, of your contribution. And actually, as a true believer, you should not leave this world with your contribution still in you. You should bring out whatever treasures, whatever gifts, whatever talents Allah has put in you. Because these are, these are gifts from Allah. You are supposed to be thankful by utilizing them and putting them in service of humanity. So, it's not haram for us to approach this dunya, but it should not take you away from Allah. So people who focus on this world to the negligence of Allah. Allah is saying they thought that they are playing it smart and they're getting what, what they want. They put plans and their plans, they, their plans worked out. They achieved their goals. They hit all their targets. But they realized, what was that? What was it? It was nothing. It was nothing. And I remember a story that I witnessed firsthand. It was this guy who tried to put money together to buy his house. It never worked out. 20 years into his marriage, his wife kept annoying him and bugging him and reminding him about buying a house. We can't just keep living in rent. Why don't you just take a loan from the bank? And build a house. And this was in a Muslim country. He said, I don't, I don't want to deal with riba and interest and usury. I don't want to deal with that. She says, everyone is doing it. Your cousins, your brother, just the other day, he bought a house. And we just keep paying rent and rent and rent and rent. And we keep moving from one house to the other. What can we do? Just as everyone done it, you can do it as well. So he resisted. But for 20, for 20 years, he, he stayed. He stood his ground. But he gave in 20 years later. So he decides to take a loan from the bank. And he makes that leap, I would say, in his ethical choices. He made a compromise. And the house is being built and he's supervising it and he's overlooking it. And then he receives the keys. The house was ready. And it's the day for him to move into the house. And that's the day he was rushed to the emergency in the hospital, having a heart attack. And he never made it to that house. He really never made it to the house. The point is, sometimes we think we can get what we want, any which way. We can resort to any means. We can do whatever it takes, even if it's unethical. Even if it's against the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we think we're being smart. We think we can get away with it. Just like the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam. They said, let us just get rid of him or kill him. And then we would become righteous. It's your mind playing games on you. It's shaitan playing games on you. And it makes you forget about the reality of this life. And the rules and the regulations that run this universe. So what goes around comes around. So these people were heedless of Allah. They chose a lifestyle that takes them completely away from Allah. So what was Allah's response? Allah designed this universe in a way that it is responsive to your intentions. 
It's responsive to your thoughts. It's responsive to your actions. That's how this world is, is designed. It is so obedient to Allah. So when you intend evil, evil will come back to you. And I remember this story that was one of my teachers as I was growing up tells us the story. He says, the other day I saw one of the uncles in our village and he was, he was in his 80s and he was working in the field. He was working hard in the burning sun. And I was surprised because his son is rich, his, his children are rich and he himself had a lot of money. And he was working really hard and you could see he's extremely weak. So I asked him, you know, what are you, why are, are you doing this? He said, my son won't let me stay in his house unless I do some work. He said, how come? Like you sent your son to the best schools, to, the, to university. You help him grow up and become a, a successful businessman. What happened? He said, you know what? I can tell you so many reasons what went wrong with my son. But that's what I did to my dad. That's what I did to my father when he grew old. And now I'm going through the same. And I think almost everyone who's been around in this world for some time knows a similar story. Especially with father and son. So we think sometimes we can mathematically calculate it and audit it and it works out fine. But even if the numbers match, there's a bigger system that governs this universe and it's not what you calculate. It's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instilled and built into this world, into this universe. And that's why Allah, the Prophet ﷺ told us about this. The Prophet ﷺ told, there was a story about a man who believed in the Prophet ﷺ and he came to join him in one of the battles. So he came and he joined. And the battle was going through stages. After the first stage, the Muslims were winning and they got some spoils of war. So the Prophet ﷺ was dividing the shares. So he keeps the share for that man. He asks about him, he's not around. So he keeps his share safe. When the man comes back, his friends tell him, that's your share. He says, what's this? They said, the Prophet ﷺ gave you that share. So he goes to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, what's this? He said, that's your share. He said, that's, what not, that's not what I followed you. I came for something else. He said, what did you come for? He said, I came to give my soul for Allah, for a greater cause. I came in order for myself to be shot with an arrow here, right here in my throat. The Prophet ﷺ says, if you are truthful to Allah, Allah will give you what you ask for. If you're truthful to Allah, Allah will turn that back to you. So in the second phase of the war, and in the, med in the middle of the combat, a man is being carried, brought to the Prophet ﷺ and he's dead. And the Prophet ﷺ sees the arrow hanging right from the throat of that man. And he asks, is it the guy? As he sees him over there. They say, yes. He says, Sadaq Allah fa sadaqahu. He says, he's been truthful to Allah. And Allah has, Allah made circumstances be truthful and responsive to him. That's how Allah deals with us. The Prophet ﷺ teaches the companion, the young companion, Abdullah ibn Abbas. He says, Ihfad Allah yahfadka. Preserve Allah, preserve the laws, the rights of Allah, the obligations of Allah, the commands of Allah, the instructions of Allah. Preserve them. Allah will preserve you. One for one. That's how Allah deals with us here. The Prophet ﷺ also makes it clear that whatever you do is going to come back to you. That's how this world works. And the, actually Allah SWT makes it even more clear. That's not only with how you deal with the creation, but even how you deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we oftentimes, our thoughts about Allah are not consequential. Many times I brought this up, and I will keep bringing it up, because this is a very central part of our religion. And it's very consequential and practical. Most of our pain, most of our failures, most of our impracticality, even among the religious folks, is because of our negative thoughts about Allah. We don't truly believe Allah is there for us. We don't truly believe Allah is merciful enough. We don't truly believe that being mindful of Allah is going to lead us to success. So we do it with so much doubt. We do it in a lousy manner. We don't do it full heartedly. And that's the only time it works. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the divine hadith, أَنَا عِنْدَ ظَنِّ عَبْدِي بِي فَلْيَظُنَّ عَبْدِي بِي مَا شَاءَ I am to my servant, 
I will treat my servant as he thinks of me. What do you believe about Allah? That's how Allah is going to turn out to be for you. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. So your beliefs and your thoughts about Allah are consequential. If you don't see that now, if you can't, can't figure it now, it doesn't mean it's not there. It just means you haven't developed enough clarity to see how this works out. If you are questioning why are things happening to you, then you truly don't, you don't trust enough. You don't trust enough. And the rest, life will challenge you. Life will challenge every one of us because that's the nature of life. And it's going to put your belief in Allah to the test. It's going to push you, your belief to the limits. That doesn't mean the true belief about Allah is not true. It's true. But that's just the test for you. True beliefs... You know, we'll pass the test of time, regardless. These are universal truths about Allah. Allah is the Almighty. Allah is the mo m most merciful. Allah is the severe in punishment. Allah is just. Allah is fair. Allah is kind. Allah is knowledgeable and all-knowing. These are universal truths. They will never change. And if you doubt them, they don't change. It's just that's your problem. So whatever happens in the universe, we usually turn to question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather than question our ability to hold on to these beliefs. Look at what happens. How many innocent people die in the world? How many innocent people die in the world? And people turn out to say, and sometimes Muslims say, if Allah is there, why does he allow such suffering? Why do innocent people die? Right? So we question Allah's power and might. We question Allah's promise. We question Allah's mercy. But we don't realize that before questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should question ourselves. We should question humanity. We should question our perception of what is going on. Because usually the problem is with how we see things, not with how things are. So from now on, just to make it simple, remember, whatever your deep intentions are in this world, that's what you're going to see in this life and in the next. The world, in a sense, is a mirror. Is a mirror. It will reflect back whatever you have in your heart. It's not the fake smiles that you show. It's not the lip service that you pay. It's what's in your heart, deep down, your real intentions. That's what life is going to give you. If you are truthful, and if you are fair and just and ethical, this universe will work for you, because that's how Allah designed it. If Allah is your main concern and your ultimate goal, the, the, the dynamics of the universe will start serving you. That's how Allah designed this universe. And the Prophet ﷺ actually spoke about this. He spoke about this in a hadith that is reported by Imam Ahmad and it's authentic. He says, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your main concern and is your ultimate goal, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fill your heart with a sense of abundance and richness. And he will make this universe to be fully at your service. And if you do it the other way around, then Allah will bring about a sense of lack in your heart. Even if you possess everything in the world, you still feel poor and lacking. And you will not get more than what Allah wrote for you in the first place. So from now on, you don't need to do work. It's inner work. Turn to Allah in good intention. Every day, start your day. Oh Allah, thank Allah for this day. And make an intention. And a resolution. Oh Allah, I want to go through this day in the best way I can. I want to wish well for others. I want to help others. I want to be at service to others. I'm not going to judge people. And I'm going to be obedient to you, oh Allah. I'll be good to Allah and to the creation. 
Make that firm intention in the morning and try to stick by it throughout the day. Make it a daily habit and see how things will start to change. See how things in life will start to change. And I will close with this appeal that the connection to that the collection today that we have, inshallah, will go to our brothers and sisters in Al Ghuta in Syria. All of you know what's going on. Innocent people, old men, women are being killed, are being wiped out of the face of earth mercilessly by people who don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People who think there will be no day of judgment. Don't truly believe there will be a day of judgment. People who haven't realized the rule that what goes around comes around. They don't know that they will pay whatever they have put forth. They will be paid whatever they have put forth. It will come back to them. You torture people, you just torturing yourself is going to come back to you. You kill people, you're going to experience that pain of all of these people. You destroy people's lives and future. All of this is going to come back to you. And if it doesn't happen in this life, that's a very bad sign. It's a very bad sign because the Prophet ﷺ told about the people that Allah will punish the most are the ones that he would not punish in this world. He wants to save a full version of torture and pain for them on the day of judgment. So they get paid back in full on the day of judgment. That's it. They just get paid back what they do in this life. So the collection today, inshallah, will go to them. So be as generous as possible and do that with a good intention. Do that with a good intention. And I'm going to close with this short story, less than one minute. One brother came to me last week. And I know that he was in a difficult situation, extremely difficult situation. And he said, I came here and prayed Fajr in the masjid. And he said, just before that, a couple of hours before that, I wasted $50 for no good reason. I don't know how I just wasted it. And it's gone. I was feeling bad about it. And he said, everything, all the doors were closed, were shut in my face. Everything about my future, my plans, and, and so many things. So he said, I came and prayed Fajr here in the masjid. As I was walking out, I just turned, I felt a, a moment of trust in Allah. And I looked in my pocket, that was only $30. And I said, he said, I went to the box, donation box, and I put them in the box. I said, oh Allah, that's a gift from me, for someone who needs it, for someone who can utilize it. And he, he said, I felt that trust in Allah, that Allah is going to give me back. He says, the same day I received a phone call with all my problems being solved at once. It's a real story, no joke. I'm not going to mention the details because the brother's in this masjid and it's, it's a private affair. So a complicated, complex problem got solved in a few hours. So trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever you give is going to come back to you. If not in this life, it's going to come back in the next, inshallah. Allahumma khfil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al hayai minan wal amwat. Allahumma khfil lana dhanubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al qawm al kafirin. اللهم كن للمستضعفين من المؤمنين في كل مكان اللهم احقن دماءهم وصن أعراضهم اللهم احفظ عليهم دينهم وإيمانهم برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه